Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew, coming to you from the beautiful Carolinas. Today's topic is going to be the drama games of the narcissist. Think about that for a minute. Everyone, if you like the content, please like, subscribe, and share. So something the narcissist loves is drama. They love to create noise. They love to have disruption. They love to have confusion and chaos. And they want to be able to manipulate people and they want drama surrounding them and those people that the narcissist surrounds themselves with. Many times the narcissist drags people into their own dramatic experiences and many times the experiences that the narcissist creates are true and sometimes they're actually not true. Keep in mind, you never know what is coming out of the narcissist's mouth if it's the truth or not. You have to take everything with a grain of salt. That's why these people so frequently, they will say A, B, and C and they'll do X, Y, and Z. But what they do is they want to surround themselves with drama. And think about a couple examples. So when you were in the relationship with them, maybe they got a flat tire. Maybe it was an hour away from your house and they asked you to come change the flat tire for them. And you said, well, why would I do that? There's a gas station very close to near where you are. Why can't you just do it yourself? And they would cause a scene and maybe they would hang up on you on the phone and they would show you their disgust and disdain because they couldn't control you and, ha and they couldn't ruin your afternoon. Now again, whether they got the flat tire or not, one will never know. What we will know is that when they came home, let's say a couple hours later, and there are multiple layers to, to what I'm sharing with you, when they came home a couple hours later, they would say, oh, it was no big deal. Two, two guys about my age, they changed the tire for me and everything was fine. And you're scratching your head saying, why would you tell me all those details? I don't need to know. All I need to know is you got the flat tire changed and you're good and you're safe. Everything's fine. Well, right there, you were triangulated, number one. Number two, did they actually have a flat tire? Who knows? Number three, they stayed out later than they were supposed to because they weren't supposed to come home a couple of hours later. It usually only takes a couple minutes to change a tire. But what did they do? Maybe they were out grooming the new supply. Maybe one of those alleged people that changed the tire, wink, wink, if they actually did change a tire, was the new supply. Again, we will never know, but what we do know is the narcissist created drama. And now you, on that afternoon, you were scratching your head thinking, should I have gone out and changed the tire? I mean, it was an hour one way, and I know there was a gas station right where they were, but I should, I don't know. This is how the narcissist wants you questioning yourself. They want you confused. They wanna manipulate you. And it's just one example of how the narcissist needs drama in their lives. Same thing when you were cooking in the kitchen. Let's say that you were, you're a good cook and you like to cook and you take pride in your cooking abilities, well, you would be cooking, then the narcissist maybe would nudge you out and tell you that you're boiling that egg the wrong way or that you don't know how to add water to, to make a certain uh, paste or to add water to dough or something. And they would just bump you out. How many times were you nudged out of the way in your own kitchen or other areas as well? But the narcissist, this is what they're doing. They're trying to provoke you and they're trying to create drama and they're trying to have you not be yourself. Other examples of drama, let's say you were driving and everything's going fine and you're driving and the narcissist is sitting next to you, of course, on one of their three smartphones, not paying attention to you, but they are backseat driving in the front seat. They're telling you you missed a turn, not to go so fast, not to go so slow, stop here, do this. Why did you miss the red light? We're gonna be late, we're gonna be early. Oh, I forgot something, let's go back to the house and pick it up. Oh, we, have, we need to pick up person A, B, and C along the way, but they're actually not on the way. They're 45 minutes in the wrong direction, but we still have to pick them up because I told them we'd give them a ride. And then you're saying to yourself, who are these people? I don't even know them. And why didn't you tell me about this two or three days ago? We could have talked about it. It's because the narcissist needs drama and they need to disrupt you and what you're doing. That's why using that example, so frequently you were the unpaid helper. You were the chauffeur. You were the sounding board and you were the walking apology. You get so beaten down in these relationships because they are so filled with chaos and drama that you don't even have a voice any longer. You become a shell of yourself. You become an extension of the narcissist. So eventually when you're in these relationships, day after day, week after week, week, etc., you find yourself being silenced by the narcissist. You just, you give up to a degree. Now, when I say give up, what I'm saying is you still, because you're in the devaluation stage, you're still doing what you can to patch up that relationship. But the more patches that you're placing on the relationship and the harder you're working for the narcissist and the relationship, the more they are trying to create drama and they're trying to break that relationship. They're trying to drive a wedge between you, your character, you, your health, you, your finances, you, your network of friends, you, your hobbies, 
you, your status, everything about you. They're trying to disrupt it and take it from you. And drama is one of the main ways they do this. Think about this, what, maybe your immediate family members, maybe you were very close with them and you told the narcissist that, yeah, you're close with everybody and everyone's doing great. And then what did they do? Well, they got close to those people, maybe, and they tried to tell, tell that, that your brothers and sisters or parents some bad things about you or not good things about you. They're trying to drive a wedge between you and them. And let's say that your family members went back and told you what, your, what the narcissist said, even though they didn't know they were a narcissist. Well, then right there, they created drama again, didn't they? Yes, they did. You see, whether your immediate family members believed what the narcissist said or not, that doesn't matter. The words were uttered. And if they were uttered and they get back to you or they don't, either way, people are confused and they don't know what to believe. Are you the person that your family knows you are? Of course you are. Are you the person that the narcissist was trying to portray you to be? Of course you're not. But this is how these things start. It's all about drama and it's all about the narcissist and their needs and wants and what they can take from people. This is why one minute in a narcissistic relationship is one minute too long when you've identified that that person is a toxic, challenging, narcissistic person or just a toxic person in general. But the narcissist needs drama and the games will go on. What about your phone? Let's say that you were texting this person when, and you were giving them an update as to what's going on. Hey, I'll be home at six o'clock, traffic's a little late. Should I pick up something from on the way home to make dinner or should, do we need anything at the house, etc. Innocent things that a healthy or stable person should be able to do with their partner, right? Okay, well, what happens there? Maybe you got a text that replied, can't talk now, I'll get back to you later. And then later never comes and then you get home and you're, you are a little bit late, but you didn't, never got a response from the narcissist. Again, you didn't know they were a narcissist. So what did you do? You, you got home and you waited and you, maybe you texted them again, you didn't get a response. Maybe another hour or two goes by, it's eight o'clock now, and then they walk in the front door as if nothing ever happened. And you're like, What's going on? Didn't I, I texted you at four o'clock and told you my update, but where were you? What did you do? How come you didn't get back to me? And they would tell you something like, oh, my battery died, or oh, I didn't even see the message, or oh, I apologize. I was doing something, I'd stay late at work. They will create drama any way possible, but what they won't do is be accountable. What they won't do is do the right thing. What they won't do is be in communication with you on the upfront level, meaning healthy, stable communication. They won't do that. You will never get that from them. Even in the love bomb slash euphoric stage, you don't get that. What you get is smoke and mirrors. You get somebody mirroring back to you what you want to see in that person. That's why when you were in the love bomb slash euphoric stage, you fell for the mask. You believed that the person's words would match their actions and we now know that that's not the case. The narcissist will tell you anything they possibly can to get close to, to extract your resources from you. Again, which include your time, money, energy, effort, love, empathy, your, your status, tangible assets, access, to certain uh, people and events and clubs, etc., and your hobbies, of course. But this is all drama for the narcissist. Let's go back to the texting again. Maybe you would, let, let's flip it. Let's say the narcissist texted you and they asked you to do something and you were at work, but back then you were so deep in the devaluation stage, you didn't know what was going on, so you dropped everything you were doing to get back to the narcissist. And then you would give them the answer, yeah, I can do A, B, and C, and actually I'll do everything X, Y, and Z too. I'll get all 26 things done on the list that you asked me to do in the middle of my work day on a Friday at, at two o'clock, but I'll do it. Why? Because you groomed me and trained me into doing it, and I'm trapped and I don't know where I am. So of course I will do whatever I can to keep the peace. And then what would happen? You would do it and you would get everything done, which is miraculous, but let's just say you did. And then the narcissist would say, oh, well, you forgot about this one. And you're looking and you're saying, what are you talking about? You don't even, even ask me to do that. Uh, yeah, I did. Gaslighting 101. Next thing you know, there's drama and you feel like even though you did all 26 things on the endless to-do list, there was a mysterious 27th one because you see, you can never quite satiate the narcissist. You can never pacify them. You can never keep them happy. They are always are moving the goalposts. They are always future faking. They are always gaslighting you. They are instilling the smear campaign. They're trying to drive a wedge between you and them. They're trying to break the relationship. They're trying to find the new source of supply. They're looking for the next new shiny object. They need drama all around them. It's the same thing, a very simple one, filling up the gas tank or electricity these days. Well, the narcissist would tell you, hey, I don't like to fill up the gas tank. Would you mind doing it? And you're, you would, back then you would say, sure, I'll do it, whatever, I don't care. But you did it out of the kindness of your heart. 
What you didn't realize is you were being many financially abused there because the narcissist would never give you money for gas for the gas but you would fill up their gas tank gladly because you were trying to keep them happy and trying to satiate them but that one time the gas tank was perhaps a little bit running low and maybe they had to go a far distance then they had to put the gas in the tank then they would be texting you saying why don't you keep it filled what's your problem you know that this is one of your to-do things on the endless to-do list what's what's going on here i had to put gas in i had to waste my own time what 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 i can't believe this what are you doing Again, they don't care about what you've done for them in the past. They don't care about yesterday or any of those days. They care about what they can get from you in this exact moment. That's why the narcissist lives for the moment. You live in the present moment. There is a big difference. Example, when you were in the narcissistic relationship, if you made plans, maybe you're gonna go to a music event or go get away on a weekend or something. Well, you would make plans with the narcissist. And if something better came along, back then you didn't know this, but if something better came along, they would kibosh your plans and they would go do something else. And there are a couple reasons why there. Number one, because they're trying to invalidate or devalue you and telling you that you don't matter. And unfortunately, that's just the way these people work. But number two, they believe that whatever they were gonna do was gonna give them more of a rush or give them more of a, an energetic pump. In other words, maybe it was with the new supply that you didn't even know about. Who knows, but they will change plans any which way the wind blows. They will do whatever they want to any which way the wind blows. They do not care about people. They can't fall in love. They have no empathy. All they care about is for, is what people provide for them. The narcissist sees people as opportunities. And what do they want to do at the ending of a relationship? Usually they want to discard people in a dramatic fashion, usually around a holiday. Maybe you just had a surgery. Maybe it was during um, a, a birth of a child or the death of a loved one or you just lost your job or something pivotal happened, although it's not always this way, but many times it is. But the narcissist needs drama. They want to inflict as much damage on people as soon as they possibly can once they understand who the person is and that their relationship has expired because each and every narcissistic relationship, it has an expiration date. We now know that and it's unfortunate, but these people are hollow and they're shallow and there's nothing to them. There's no core, there's no substance to them. All they want to do is slither away into the middle of the woods and find a new source of supply, take whatever they can from that person, create as much drama and disruption in that person's life and then slither away to the next person and on and on and on. That is why when you were in the relationship, you were giving to a fault. Maybe you were a people pleaser. Maybe you are an empath. Maybe you did not have boundaries. I am certain you couldn't say no, the strongest word in the English language. Remember, when you learn to say no, you are saying to, when you say no to someone or something, you're saying yes to yourself. But you couldn't do anything in that relationship, anything more than you, than you did. When I say that, I mean, you did everything you possibly could have. You probably went above and beyond the call of duty to build that relationship up and to keep your word and your vows and your honor and your trust and everything. The narcissist, all they did was figure out how long they would stay in that relationship with you. Maybe it was just to raise the kids for six years. Maybe it was to build a business that started up after three years. Maybe it was to have the kids graduate high school or college. Who knows? Maybe it was to put a roof over their head and then they would swindle you out of your own house. In other words, they would tell you to put the deed under their name. I can't tell you all the reasons you know because you were in the relationship, but the narcissist knows that each and every relationship will end. They also know they will try to break that relationship. That's what many times where the reverse discard is. They have you end it when in fact they wanted to end it and they want to play the victim card. There are layers upon layers upon layers of the nuances of the narcissistic abusive relationship and cycle. The onion can't get packed can't get unpacked nearly enough in one video. That's why each and every day I create content to let you know that there are so many challenges in these relationships. And once you've exited the relationship and put yourself back together and you've gone no contact, blocked these people, deleted them, removed them, and all flying monkeys and people associated with them, that's when you begin to heal and you understand that you have to slow your life down and that your life will now be toxic free, it will be drama free, it will be chaos free, it will be confusion free, it will be manipulation free, it will be free of all of the nastiness of the narcissist. You now can do what you want, when you want, with whom you want to do things. And there is no room in your life for drama. Not today, not tomorrow, not in the future. You already went through the cycle. And many times people go back to the narcissistic relationship a few times before they get the message that the narcissist can't change. They are pressing that gas pedal of abuse and all they want to do is watch people stay stuck and trapped in the cycle. And the one thing before I close the video, the one thing that remains constant in the narcissistic abusive cycle 
It's not you, it's the narcissist. All they do is go from person to person, town to town, relationship to relationship, blowing these things up while taking anything they possibly can and leaving a wake of destruction in their path. That's what they do. So understand all the drama. Before you entered that relationship with the narcissist, I'm sure you had little to no drama in your life. Maybe to you, drama was watching a TV show or a movie. Probably was. Lo and behold, you meet the narcissist, you go on that roller coaster of emotions, you get dunked in that deep end of destruction, you're in the cesspool of manipulation and you don't know what's going on. All you know is you're a shell of yourself, you've lost your identity and you don't know how to get out of where you are or where you were. That is the devaluation stage or the narcissistic fog. But a funny thing happened, you found that needle in a haystack and you got yourself out of that relationship and now you're healing, that's a good thing. And now when you slow your life down, you realize that there's no room in life for drama, not from anybody around you, no matter who they are, blood relative or not. If you want drama these days, you can pick up a Netflix show and watch it. By the way, I still don't watch movies or any of that stuff, but the point being, there shouldn't be drama in your real everyday existence. We did it, we're done, those days are over. That's the video, everyone. I hope you liked it. I loved doing it from the beautiful Carolinas. This is Andrew, namaste. Have a great afternoon, evening, or morning, no matter where you are on the planet. You are not alone, remember that. God bless you all, I love you. And remove the drama from your life. If there's somebody in your life that you believe you, can, you should be blocking, make the pro-con list. Really slow down and take a look at it and figure out if they're serving you or not. Because many people are energy vampires. Many people wanna take from you. Many people wanna guilt you into staying into relationships. And there are other people that are the narcissists that try to take you down for the count, but they failed because they always fail miserably because at the end of the day, they are a low vibrational individual. They can never ever be the beautiful, bright, shining light that you are. They tried to capture you. They succeeded for a period of time, but they cannot any longer because now you have boundaries and you know your worth and your value. I love you all. God bless you. And I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right. Bye, you guys. And I hope you like the scenery. It's beautiful.